Welcome. This webinar will provide an overview of the ACLS HBCU Faculty Fellowships and Grants Program. I'll start with a brief overview of ACLS, who we are, and the ways in which we support scholarship across the humanities and interpretive social sciences. And then I'll discuss the application components and review process for the ACLS HBCU Faculty Fellowships and Grants competitions. The American Council of Learning Societies is a private nonprofit organization that has been around for over 100 years, since 1919. Many of you may know our fellowship and grant making work, but another core component of our work is that we're a federation of 81 scholarly societies. Our members span just about every area of the humanities and include large societies such as the American Historical Association and the Modern Language Association, as well as smaller societies like the American Society for Aesthetics and the Austrian Studies Association. Our mission, whether through our work with societies or offering grants and fellowships to individual scholars, is to advance humanistic studies across all humanities and interpretive social science fields. This chart shows that we aim to position ourselves at the intersection of schools, scholars, societies, and even systems, and we offer programming that touches on all these areas. For the purposes of the presentation today, we'll be focusing on this blue-gray circle, our work supporting individual scholars through fellowships and programs. ACLS offers a variety of fellowship and grant programs. Last year, we offered 13 fellowship and grant programs and provided around 25 million in support to approximately 300 awardees. Our fellowship and grant competitions employ a multi-stage peer review process, which I'll discuss in more detail later on. But last year, nearly 600 peer reviewers offered their time and insights to support this work. We encourage anyone who is considering applying for an ACLS HBCU faculty fellowship or grant to also apply to any other ACLS opportunity for which they are eligible. Please see our website, acls.org, to learn more about all the opportunities we offer. Let's now move to the main event, the ACLS HBCU faculty fellowships and grants program. I'd like to briefly offer some context on the program's origins. This program is a three-year pilot funded by the ACLS Endowment that was created in consultation with HBCU administrators and faculty members. ACLS held seven focus groups with over 35 faculty members from public and private institutions, from large and small schools, and in fields ranging from history to education to philosophy. We were interested in understanding two things. First, the teaching, learning, and research context of these institutions, because we know HBCUs are not a monolith. And second, what types of fellowship and grant support would be most helpful? Our goal was to listen, learn, and be responsive, so we tried our best to include as many of the suggestions we received into this offering. Now let's turn to the specifics of the program. Based on what we learned from the focus groups, we landed on two separate competitions, one for fellowships and one for grants. ACLS is offering up to eight fellowships of up to $50,000 and up to 12 grants of up to $10,000. If you're awarded a grant, the work must be completed in 12 to 15 months. And if you're awarded a fellowship, the work must be completed in 15 to 27 months. One thing to know is that if you apply for a fellowship, for example, and you propose to complete your project in 15 months, that will be as competitive as someone aiming to complete their work in 27 months. In other words, you should propose a project timeline that makes sense for your project and will allow you to accomplish the work you seek to do. If you are debating whether to apply for a fellowship or a grant, we'd encourage you to think about the scope and stage of your project. If your project is smaller in scale, or perhaps is at an earlier stage of development, you might consider applying for a grant. However, if you have a larger project that requires more of your time, or a project that is further along in development, then you might consider applying for a fellowship. It is important to note that while grants require no time off, fellowships require the equivalent of four course releases. This time can be taken during the academic year, 
as course releases or a research leave or during the summer in lieu of summer salary or to supplement a sabbatical. We're flexible on how this time can be distributed and we encourage you to contact us at fellowships at acls.org with questions about your specific situation. Regardless of whether you apply for a grant or a fellowship, both offer flexible support, meaning that they cover a range of expenses. For example, if you want funds to travel to an archive and write a monograph, we can support that. Or if you want funds to pay an honorarium to a collaborator or funds to train research assistants, we can support that as well. If you need child or elder care in order to do your work, or perhaps you need an event space and food for a community partnership, we can support that as well. These are just a few examples, but the key takeaway is that our goal is to help you move your work forward and we recognize that the needs of each faculty member and each project will vary. Both the fellowships and grants are non-residential, so you're able to do your work from anywhere in the world that makes sense for you. And both support flexible products, meaning that we view scholarship broadly, whether you plan to produce a book or scholarly article, open educational resources with meaningful connections to your research, or a community-engaged project grounded in scholarly research but geared towards a public audience. These are just a few examples. There are only two caveats to keep in mind. First, any resource produced about teaching and learning must be focused on a post-secondary context as K-12 resources are not eligible. Second, in keeping with ACLS's mission, all projects must engage substantially with research in the humanities or interpretive social sciences. I would like to highlight that you are able to submit applications for both the fellowship and grant competitions in the same year, but they must be for separate projects. However, if you are awarded both a fellowship and a grant, you may only accept one. Now, as for our eligibility criteria, first, we require that applicants hold an MA or PhD in a humanistic or social science field. However, we can be somewhat flexible on this. For example, if you have a PhD in organizational management, but have been teaching rhetoric and communication courses for the past four years, then you might be eligible. We encourage you to email us at fellowships at acls.org with any eligibility questions about your specific context. Second, to be eligible, you must be primarily employed at an HBCU, but you may be tenured on the tenure track or a contingent faculty member. We do require that you remain primarily employed at an HBCU for the duration of your fellowship or grant term. Finally, you must agree to take part in occasional networking, project development, and mentorship events during the course of the award term. Let's now move on to the application components. We aim to see you as whole scholars who have teaching, service, and research commitments, and our goal in the application is to provide opportunities for you to represent your obligations and interests holistically. To that end, the application features questions about your service and teaching obligations so that we may better understand your research aims in context. The fellowship application is slightly longer than the grant application, but both require the application form, a short research proposal in which you'll discuss your project and its broader humanistic significance, a personal statement describing your intellectual journey as a scholar, a work plan in which you'll operationalize your ideas and tell us what work you intend to do and when, and finally, a budget detailing all project expenses. You may find templates for the work plan and the budget uh, on our website. Please note that we do not require reference letters, nor do we require institutional statements upon applying. However, if you do receive an award, we will require a brief form to be signed by an administrator at your institution that confirms you are able and eligible to accept the fellowship or grant. Please refer to the individual competition pages for detailed instructions on application components and formatting guidelines. One of the goals for this program was to make the process worthwhile to you and to your institutions. We know that writing a fellowship application takes time, time away from teaching, service, scholarship, and other aspects of your life. Therefore, if you're awarded a fellowship or grant, your institution will receive a $2,500 grant. 
Your administration may use these funds to support humanities programming or infrastructure at your institution. In addition, if you make it to the finalist round, but you are not awarded a fellowship, you will receive a $500 research grant to use in a way that furthers your research project. Finalists will also be invited to participate in virtual project and proposal development workshops. The deadline for both fellowship and grant competitions is November 6, 2024, by 9 p.m. Eastern. The application portal can be accessed at ofa.acls.org. I would like now to discuss our peer review process. ACLS employs a multi-stage interdisciplinary peer review process. After ACLS confirms the eligibility of your application, your application then goes through two stages of peer review. First round reviewers will likely be a scholar within your discipline, while in the final round of review, your application will be reviewed by a multidisciplinary selection committee of scholars from across the humanities and interpretive social sciences. While reviewers in your field may implicitly know the stakes of your project, you must also demonstrate these stakes to an audience of non-specialists. We encourage you to think of this as a conversation you're having with colleagues in which your goal is to highlight the broader humanistic significance of your work if you're a historian of the United States, the reviewers are looking to see the resonances of your work beyond US history and beyond the discipline of history. Your proposal should clearly articulate why does this work matter and to whom. I wanna be clear that our starting point here is that your work does matter, that's not in doubt. But part of the work of crafting your application is making this importance explicit to specialist and non-specialist alike. As you prepare to apply, we encourage you to take advantage of the resources ACLS makes available online. The program page has links to our FAQ, as well as to this year's fellows and grantees, which include their project abstracts. You can also sign up to attend office hours with program officers, where you can ask application questions. These take place over the summer and fall. In addition, you can also submit a draft application for feedback. Between now and August 28th, you may submit complete or incomplete drafts of proposals, work plans, and or budgets via the submission portal linked on the program page. Our expert reviewers will offer you feedback by early October. The draft feedback process is separate from our normal review process, so don't worry about submitting rough drafts. The goal is to provide you with usable feedback that you may incorporate into your final submission. To end, I will go over some tips as you put together your application. First, we encourage you to read the HBCU program page carefully, noting the core application components and their formatting instructions. Log into the application portal early to understand the full scope of the application and the time it will take to complete it. This will also allow you to troubleshoot any technical issues that may arise. Please note that every piece of the application counts. The different application components are meant to help you articulate your project beyond its central idea, prompting you to think about timeline, feasibility, and other important project parameters. One important thing that we ask you to keep in mind is the difference between an idea and a project. Your research is steeped in humanistic and social science ideas, and in your proposal, you are positioning these ideas in a broader context. While ideas are central to your work, our aim is to fund projects with a beginning, middle, and end. We encourage you to articulate what stage your project is in and how these funds will support the stage of your project and advance it in some way. Know your audience. Keeping our interdisciplinary peer review process in mind, your arguments and the stakes of your project should be clearly understood by non-specialists, avoiding jargon, and defining your key terms. Be sure to substantiate your claims, balancing theory and evidence. Lastly, if possible, test with a sample audience. 
fresh eyes on your application materials can help catch typos and other incongruencies that can undermine the strength of your materials. As a reminder, the application deadline is November 6, 2024, and application materials must be submitted by 9 p.m. Eastern. Unfortunately, this deadline is not flexible. Applications are available at ofa.acls.org. Finally, thank you for taking the time to view this presentation for the ACLS HBCU Faculty Fellowships and Grants Program. We wish you the very best in your application. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact us at fellowships at acls.org.